So what now? Now, you find out what it is you need to do. So there are not many RPGs that I like as much as Cyberpunk 2077. Despite its bugs, its terrible launch, the story, the characters, the world engage me more than any other RPG I've ever played other than the best of the very best, the Baldur's Gate 2s, the Mass Effect 2s, you know, the, the, the goats. The problem with Cyberpunk was, you know, everything else, the bugs, the empty world, the weird crafting system, the fact that basically other than having an amazing narrative, I really think Cyberpunk stands up as one of the greatest narratives in the history of gaming. I think the story is that good. The problem with the initial release of Cyberpunk 2077 was the story was about the only thing that was good. The combat was quirky and weird, and the RPG systems didn't make it feel like an RPG, just a very strange, confused, drug-addicted deus ex shooter. The open world didn't feel at all like GTA, with systems in the open world involving quests and cops and criminality that made it look like Vice City was a pioneer in the genre, and those open-world systems couldn't live up to games that were 15 or 20 years older than they were. So in my eyes, Cyberpunk 2077 was this strange game. I basically ignored the open world mostly, and I enjoyed the story and the characters because if you watch my channel, you know I'm a gamer that's... I, I'm primarily motivated by how much I'm engaged in the narrative. I love it when the gameplay systems engage the narrative well, but I can be I can be bribed with a good story. And Cyberpunk 2077 really bribed me with one of my favorite stories in the history of gaming altogether. And when all this happened, I thought to myself, gee, I really hope, I just please, please let CD Projekt Red actually fix this game. I know they can do it. They have the talent on hand. They have a proven track record of improving their games after launch. A lot of people for, forget how bad the, a lot of the Witcher games were on launch. Let them do it. If I, I believe that they can fix it. And I'm a skeptic. If you watch my channel, I normally spend most of my time ranting about things that I think computer devs and gaming devs and corporations do wrong. That's sort of my shtick. But CD Projekt Red have done it. The new patch of Cyberpunk 2077, the 2.0 patch, is insane. I have never seen a game other than No Man's Sky improve this much after launch. It's such an improvement. And they've been building up to it with small improvements to the crafting system, small improvements here and there over the three years since the game's release. But they've really done it. The game is absolutely awesome. So I want to take the rest of this video to explain the, the major changes that I think make the game awesome. I mean, if you want patch note videos from YouTubers, you can watch those. But I'm going to go over the really salient points that I think are our reason why you should buy the game or re-download it if you if you played it before and uh, go into how I think this finally turns Cyberpunk 2077 into one of the greatest RPGs in the history of RPGs. So let's get right to the number one reason that 2.0 is an infinite improvement on the game. And that is the number one criticism that people made of the game at launch and I just ignored because I was so enthralled in the story. The open world felt empty. In particular, it's supposed to be Night City. And if you know anything about Night City, Night City is supposed to be full of criminals and cops and gangs and things. And in the 1.0 early days of Cyberpunk, the game felt completely empty. You just walked basically from quest giver to quest giver. The set pieces of the story were good. But the open world, really the game could have been a linear story-based game and it would have been better than having the open world that it had because the open world didn't do anything. It was a mere aesthetic. This has been re completely uh, fixed. There are now gang wars. You can be driving to a mission and find yourself in a shootout between the cops and the gang and you're backing out your car trying to get away. And the gangs are shooting and the cops are shooting and like, oh, no, I just wanted to drive down the streets at Night City. The, 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 feet, the vibe is just awesome. It has, that, it has that Grand Theft Auto, this city is alive, I'm just trying to do crime. And it's like, oh, no, I just need to grab a car. Oh, no, shit, the cops saw me. There's this vibe of, of just 
being completely engaged in the open world that the game really lacked. And I forgave it for the story, as I said a million times already in this video. But now we're really seeing what 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 is what this world is capable of being like. And remember, I mean, uh, CD Projekt Red have a habit of doing at least two major DLCs for games. So this really might only be the beginning. We might be here in two years talking about a full another expansion that's added another 20 hours of content onto the game and more stuff. So the, the, the future is just really bright for Cyberpunk. Uh, number two is that um, CD Projekt Red seem to be bucking the same trend that Boulder's Gate 3 are on of actually allowing you to customize your characters and their skills. The new skill system is absolutely awesome. So the original Perkins skill system was really, really boring. You basically picked whether or not you wanted to be tanky melee, damagey melee, attacky, shooting. There were very, very, very basic choices that allowed you to round out a very general character around a very general play style, such as shooting guns or not shooting guns and using melee weapons. In this new incarnation, not only is that much improved upon, there's also a new skill trait that's based on how you perform as a character that gives you bonuses based on what you do, not just what you put points into, which is further awesome. I'm playing through the game at the, as, at the, at the moment as a, as a sort of samurai-wielding character, a sword-wielding character, and I'm getting points, lots of points, into Shinobi, which is making me this sort of super deadly sword fighter. And this echoes back to older RPGs, such as Ultima Online, that allowed you to gain skill points based on your playstyle, which I, I just really, I'm really digging. Furthermore, uh, instead of the skill tree being super hyper-simplified, uh, there's a lot of amazing abilities that you want to put your perk points into, but you need to quite invest heavily into the relative stats to get up that far into the skill tree. And that's just made it feel a lot, lot more like an engaging RPG and less like a deus ex wannabe weird sort of narrative game, which is what it felt like before. The game has also completely revamped the cybernetic system. Upgrading your character as, a, as the cybernetic site is completely crucial to just progressing through the game now. It, it really does feel like an RPG in that respect. In the original game, health and uh, health and your stats, sorry, were tied to uh, item upgrades. Nowadays, most of that is tied to your core cybernetics that you upgrade at the Ripper Dock. And the advantage of this is that we now have a complex stat upgrade system in the game as opposed to you dressing like a 90s Venice Beach homeless person in order to get the maximum stats available. And this is a, a massive, massive change. You now really can think a lot about the time and money that you put into making your character what you want your character to be, always wary of that increasing your overall cybernetic capacity a little bit too much. And it's here, if you've watched a cyberpunk uh, anime, that it's taking a little bit of influence from that because now a lot of your character's power is, is, is based upon uh, just how much can you cram yourself full of cybernetics without becoming a cyber psycho, which feels a lot more in-world than, as I said, dressing like a 90s homeless person on Venice Beach. The other thing that I might have forgot to mention is that there is now in-vehicle combat. If you've played any Grand Theft Auto game, and I assume most of us have by this point, you can now do that thing where you shoot out the window and go pew, 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 without needing to jump out of the car. On top of that, the game has added into this new complex skill system skills involving vehicle combat from skills that allow you to uh, slow down time while driving the vehicle, similar to Lamar in Grand Theft Auto V, to skills that let you leap out of the vehicle like a freaking ninja. CD Projekt Red have done what few game developers in the modern era do. Hello Games are the only other one that I can think of that took the time. Sure, they're monetizing this expansion, so that makes it a little unfair compared to Hello Games. Hello Games are a uniquely, uh, uniquely virtuous lot of people. But nonetheless, this is a huge improvement, and if you've never played Cyberpunk before, you should now. So... 
Uh, I'm going to do a video following up on this on just how much better I think Cyberpunk 2077 does being an RPG than Starfield. And uh, if you want to see that, uh, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.